Hello everybody, Over Easy Evan here. Today we are taking a first look at a game that's new to me called Hadian Tactics. Um, it's a indie deck builder-ish, roguelike deck builder, sort of like games like Slay the Spire, um, a little bit like Monster Train. Those are always the comparisons people make, but it's similar in a way to those types of games, probably more like Slay the Spire. Um, but today we're going to take a first look, we're going to jump into some gameplay, we're going to look at the roadmap ahead because this game is in early access right now, and we'll look at some of the um, things like the compendium, we'll take a look at sort of some of the systems of the game so you get a feel for it, and you can decide if it's something you want to take a look at, maybe it's a game you'd like to pick up, maybe pick up on sale, or just keep an eye on until they uh, produce more content, as it, again it is an early access game. So first things first, we're going to jump right into a new game, we'll look at some of the gameplay. As you jump in, you have a choice of hero. Right now, I just have the one unlocked. I haven't really played much of this game. I do have another run going right now, and I think this actually might overwrite it, but that's fine. So we're going to jump in. We have the Inquisitor. Um, I don't know quite how many heroes they're going to have, but there is at least two for now, and I think they are going to be adding more. So you kind of have these circles sort of like levels or acts in Slay the Spire. I will probably be using that as a comparison, so if you haven't played that, um, it might be a little confusing, but I think most people who are interested in uh, roguelike deck builders probably have played that. So you sort of get a blessing uh, in the beginning of the game. You can either choose the next three battles for allies to start with 200 might and shield. Might is just your uh, attack power for your next attack, so we'll take that. Sounds good. And then you have this map. So this looks a lot like Slay the Spire again, very much. Very much so. You have your normal battles. You have elite combats, which are up here. A couple up here. Um, you have unknown, so it just sort of events. You don't really know what's going to happen. You have camps. You have shops where you can purchase uh, upgrades, um, health, things like that. And you have unit banners. This is kind of interesting. Um, and you obviously have to get to the unit banner on any path you take here. So with the unit banners, you can upgrade a... You can either draft a new um, unit, or you can upgrade an existing unit, basically, at these unit banners. And then there's also relic spots. Relics are similar to pretty much any roguelike deck builder where you can collect them. They'll do something um, positive for you throughout your run. Um, and then at the top, we have our boss battle. We're not going to make it up there. I just kind of want to show you a little bit of how the game works. So we'll jump into a battle. So, you get to start with a hero upgrade. You kind of have three paths you can go down. We have Draconic 1, Stalker 1, Relentless 1. You can also upgrade these. Oh, there's also a, a couple other ones. Oops. So there's Demonic as well, which it just appears we did not get an option for. So you kind of get um, four paths you can go down, but you get three to choose from. So this is actually similar to Monster Train, if you've played that before, where you there's a three different paths in that game and you only get two choices so in here it's four and three so you can see right here it tells you exactly what's going on if you want a tankier option like the inquisitor if you want a higher damage option um oh, sorry like relentless would be the higher tanky option stalker here would be a more damage option and then they do have different abilities so in the stalker one um they jump across the board targeting the furthest enemy and Every second turn, all allies gain a perfect strike, which is a critical hit. This seems pretty good. There's also some things down here. I don't want to get too into the details. Um, I'd rather, if you were interested in the game, you find out some things yourself. But we'll go ahead and pick Stalker. Um, and then we'll kind of get into the meat of the game. Let's go... Let's go this way. We can do a couple battles. We can check out a shop and an event in the banner upgrade. And then go from there. All right. So this is what the the game actually looks like this is what the combat looks like so you have three units to start with and you're placing them anywhere on the board if you've ever played an auto chess auto battler type game like team fight tactics um basically it looks exactly like that where you're placing your units this is our our uh, champion or whatever you'd like to call them the inquisitor so you can place them anywhere so we'll do something like this to start then you have cards. We have three energy, and you can play these cards. They have their energy cost in the top left. So I think what we'll do here is just put shield on our big boy here and then do a little damage. 
this first fight should be easy. So then basically what's going to happen from here, you can hit end turn, which starts the battle clock. The battle clock starts as seven seconds. So you will now auto battle for seven seconds. This is the battle phase. We're not doing anything here. And remember, our dude jumps over there and starts attacking. So this is an easy fight. We have um, one of them down, one of them almost down as well over here. Remember the battle phase is seven seconds. So after a seven seconds is up, you will get another chance to play your hand. Um, so you'll get cards like this in your starting deck where you can gain 75 might, meaning your next attack is going to be much more um, higher damage. We can put on a shield or we could just do 75 damage here. Pretty much just win this fight. There we go. That's the first combat. And this combat loop will continue. After your uh, your fight, you'll see who did the most damage. You'll get some gold. You'll get... This is another uh, new concept that I actually don't... I mean, it's sort of like potions in other games where you... They're called runes where you can kind of use um, these things that you pick up. So yeah, I guess it's sort of like potions. Um, in this case, we receive a random talent card and it costs zero. And you can use that whenever you'd like. We also get to add a card to our deck. Um, again, I won't go too much into the status effects and things like that. That's not really the purpose of this video. It's kind of just, I would like this video to be more of a first look just to get an idea of the game. So in this case, we can deal 50 damage and gain 100 shield. Um, that's an interesting spell. We can gain 5 haste, which increases our attack speed. Or we can do bash, which will stun. Let's go ahead and just take the haste card for now. And we'll get into our next combat. Alright, so this guy's going to jump. And let's do something like this. Let's try to change it up just to see what happens. And we'll give might here. And we'll give shield here. They actually have a lot of shield. I think it's probably based on one of our... Um, Abilities. I'm not quite sure at the moment, but that's quite that's fine. And let's go ahead and end the turn for our battle phase. So you can see there that first strike he had, since he had so much might on him, did a lot of damage, almost half the damage. Because of that, um, kill here, and you'll see again, 150 might. We do 19 damage, but it's plus 150. So if you if you look closely, the first strike here is an insta kill. So Might is a pretty interesting um, status effect that could be good to stack if you can in the future. Uh, we have another card choice. Karma is an interesting one where you can, do de you can deal 75 damage and then you put this card on top of your draw pile. So you can kind of keep going through it and doing 75 damage. It's not bad. The problem is it can load up your deck if it's putting copies. And if you, if you don't want to just keep getting those, it can be bad. So we'll take a look at the shop, we'll take a look at the unknown, we'll take a look at the banner, and then we'll get into some more topics on this game. So this shop may look familiar if you've played Slay the Spire. Um, you have your card choices up top. We have 84 gold, so we obviously can't purchase everything. Um, but we have a couple of card choices. Then you have relic choices here. I don't know what they're actually called in this game, but what we're going to call them relics here right now. Um, we have three choices there, and then we also have the three rune choices. You have the remove card option, which is great. And then this is something that's pretty interesting. You also have the option to hire on a new unit. So you can click on them. This is the Mouseketeer. Love that name. And it gives you all the stats, gives you its special attack, which is pretty cool. Um, I have not actually done this yet in the game, so let's go ahead and hire the Mouseketeer purely based on name. Now, one thing that's cool about this game is you can sort of hot swap in and out your units. So let's say this guy had this uh, Draugr had low health. We could swap him out for the Mouseketeer and next fight the Mouseketeer would fight. The end of the combat phase, you heal up. So your guys on the bench obviously aren't going to be losing health. You can heal up that way, which is pretty cool. Okay, now let's check out our unknown. We have an event here. Um, it's, it's going to have sort of like a, a text thing up here. You can read through it if you'd like. If you're not interested, you don't have to. You can just jump down and choose the options. So you can either spend 10 gold to remove or 25 to upgrade. Let's take a look at the upgrades. Oh, wait, we have no gold. <laughs> Never mind. We're just interested in kisses, I suppose. We will dismiss. But that is, that is an example of an unknown event.
And then here's our banner upgrade. So this is our first one. You have the option, like I said before, to draft or upgrade. Um, since we just looked at the new units, we won't do that. We'll upgrade just to show you what it looks like. So each unit has a different path, which is pretty cool. And there appears to be quite a good amount of num a good number of units, excuse me. So the Draugr has two paths to go down. Relentless and Undead. The Mouseketeer as well has the Grifter and Thief path. And again, you can look at the specific stats to see what that means. Um, Grifter allows more attack speed and DPS. Uh, Thief actually allows more DPS damage and health. Uh, and it also adds some interesting things. Um, the Grifter, however, allows a chance to get more gold. So early on, it might be a good option to do that. There's some interesting paths you can go down with this. We'll go ahead and take Thief for now. Um, if we can here, yep, there we go. Okay. Uh, and I think that's where we're going to stop this phase. So you have a good idea of how the combats work. You have an idea of the map, what you can see inside each circle. Again, this is the first circle. And then you could you sort of got an idea of the events, the shops, the banners, and that. Um, so I think we're going to stop this phase of the video. We're going to jump into some of the things outside of playing the actual game that are interesting within this game next. Okay, so back at the main menu. And... We're going to take a look next at the Colosseum and Compendium. Now, I don't have the Colosseum unlocked, or it's an early access thing. I, I read a little bit about it, and it looks like the plan for the Colosseum is to have sort of like challenge runs and things like custom runs and things like that are going to be there. I don't know if that's actually out yet. I do know, however, so today it's early January in 2022 when this video is going to be put out, but I do know they're coming out with a new patch coming up fairly soon in the next couple weeks so maybe the Colosseum will be included in that I'm not quite sure on that but we'll take a look at the compendium now this is going to have every card you could ever want obviously you see here many of them locked and we have our heroes the inquisitor we have the nightshade you can sort of sort by which one you'd like to look at or just neutral um, so you can look at all your cards there and see which ones you have unlocked you can right click to look at the upgrades which is pretty cool we also have all our units here. Now you can see there's quite a few units, and this actually makes me very excited for this game because it just it really increases the amount of different playstyles you can take. If you want to have a playstyle where you kind of try to hoard gold with the Mouseketeer, you can do that. If you want to do something like a DPS run where you have like one tank up front and uh, have some DPS units behind, you can do that. So you have a lot of different options. You also have alliances you can sort by. I don't know too much about the alliances yet, but um, you can sort by that. You can look at maybe doing a build around. I don't know what this is, um, but you can do a build around this, like preachers or things like that. Now, here's the relics. We only have a couple unlocked. I do believe they are adding more as well, but this is what we have for now. So it looks like a decent amount of relics. We could add maybe a few more to make things interesting. But for now, this seems like a good amount. And we also have the stats page where you can see your run history. Obviously, I haven't completed a run yet, so we don't have anything there. But you can you can sort of see what units you had, what relics you had, and the result. Just kind of cool to look back. Um, it might be interesting to see if they can add even more stats in the future, like which units did the most damage. I actually don't know if you can even click into that. Um, but that would be something that would be kind of cool. So we took a look at the gameplay. We took a look at sort of what you can see in terms of stats and the compendium, things like that. Um, and now let's take a look at, since this is an early access game, let's take a look at what is coming in the future. Okay, so we took a look at the current content of the game, at least took a peek at the, the beginning of the game. There's obviously more than I showed you that, that you can do inside the game. But, and we took a look at um, some of the current things like the relics they have or artifacts. Um, some of the cards they have, some of the units they have. Now let's take a look at the future of Hadean Tactics. As I said, there is an update coming in the near future. Um, one of the cool things that they have coming out is the custom hero and custom deck where uh, you earn blood crystals throughout the game and you can use those to customize your hero and actually create your own custom hero, which is really cool. You can sort of um, equip the amount of health, regen, crit, damage, all that, all that kind of stuff, all the stats, and you can use... Uh, a total of 20 skill points it looks like which is really cool and adds a lot of um, replayability to the game if you want to try out different um, types of heroes it, it seems like a cool idea and I haven't seen much like that before without besides modding obviously you can 
use modding to make heroes in games or champions. But this is a cool way to do it. And you can even make your own different paths, which I like. Um, you can also make your own custom deck, as we sort of mentioned before. But this is, I think this is a really cool option. I really like the idea the devs are, are taking here to, to go about that. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, they are also completing the last three wings or last three bosses. So right now there are only three bosses out of six. And this next update, it looks like there are going to be all six, which is pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, this game is getting very close to the 1.0 release, it seems. So I think this would be a great time to jump into the game if you were interested. Um, as well, I did mention maybe there could be more relics. We'll take a look. They're adding more relics. It looks like 10 more relics here, um, which is very cool to see. Uh, obviously, I haven't played the game a lot, so I don't know um, much about the relics or what might need to be added. However, more relics is always a good thing. Uh, last but not least, wallpapers, if you're interested in that, they will have them available as Steam trading cards. Um, and remember, this update will be coming out soon. So if you're interested, take a look. Guys, this was Hadian Tactics. If you were interested, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the game. I plan to keep playing it. I am also going to be live on Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash over easy Evan if you were interested. I'll probably be playing this game in the near future because I'm very interested in it. I do play a bunch of other games on there as well. So if you could go ahead and take a look. If you are on Twitch and drop a follow over there, that would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Guys, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.